5x minus 1x. I'm going to put the 1 there just to make sure we see that. Uh, plus 1. And we're going to factor by grouping. So factor by grouping, we have 5x we're pulling out of that. Factoring that out, we get x minus 1. Over here, notice we have to factor out a negative. Do you guys see that? We've got to factor out a negative, and the only thing that's going in both is 1. We're going to get x and minus 1 again. The minus, because we factored a negative out, we're basically dividing by a negative that's changing the sign. We have exactly the same thing here and here. That's what we wanted. We're going to get x minus 1 and 5x minus 1. How many people made it that far? Good for you. If you didn't, go back and work on this on your own next time. See that you get that right. You have to. Okay, next one we have 4 and negative 21. I'm looking at that. I'm seeing a 7 and a 3 somehow. Are you seeing a 7 and a 3 also? Probably seeing a positive 7 and a negative 3. Again, we have to split our middle term up. 3x squared plus 7x minus 3x minus 7. We're going to factor. The only thing that factors out of our first two terms is x. We get 3x plus 7. What factors out of our last two terms, it has to be a negative because we have a minus there. And the only thing that's going into both is 1. So we're going to factor a negative 1. I'm going to put the minus 1 and I'll have 3x plus 7. Again, those signs change because you're factoring by a negative. Get used to that. That happens a lot. Are you okay so far with that? When I factor by grouping, I get 3x plus 7, I get x minus 1, and I'm done. I factored that stuff. How many people made it down on both of those? Good. If you didn't, if you didn't, if you're like, oh my gosh, I messed something up, please go back and fix that. Go back tonight and work on that. Your factoring is, right now, it's the biggest thing you can do. It's the biggest thing you can do. Simplification is easy if you know how to factor. Uh, multiplication, division of rational expressions is easy if you know how to factor. Addition, subtraction, well, we have some other stuff to do, but the simplification part of that is easy if you know how to factor. If you don't, you're going to struggle with all that stuff, and I can't afford to have you do that. Uh, so you need to be reviewing these lessons online if, if that's your case, or coming and seeing it or something. Uh, to remedy this. Okay, now we're almost done. What we're going to do, we're going to take these factored versions, we're going to put them back in our fraction form. So from our numerator, we had the x minus 1, and we have the 5x minus 1. From our denominator, we had 3x plus 7, and we had x minus 1. If you didn't get these right, can you, can you follow it down and see that this is the appropriate way to, to go? Are you guys all right with that? Are you sure? Okay. Now, do we have any common factors? Is there anything we can simplify? Yeah, that's great. X minus 1's are factors because they're multiplied here and here. We can take the entire factor and simplify it out. That's what we want to do. So X minus 1's are gone. We're going to get 5X minus 1, 3X plus 7. Can we simplify any further in this problem? If you could, you would have done it here. Okay, this takes care of all your simplification at once, provided you've completely factored. How many people are okay with that? Feel alright with this one so far? Good, alright, that's fantastic. I have a question. Yeah. So when we simplify and we move over to the final answer, the parentheses just disappear. If you have just one if factor, just one. you can do that, okay. yeah. Because it's just saying, this is my factor, right? You're multiplying by one, it really doesn't make a difference. That's a great question. If I had like three factors and I just simplified one of them, yeah, you'd want to keep the parentheses. Okay, let's end with this one. I want you to work on one on your own. <clears throat> Just see what happens on that. I want you to factor if you need to and simplify.
спасибо. I see lots of good factor. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, factors out of here. I hope that you saw this. You factor out of five, and the largest power of z that's common to both is z to the third. Did you get that? Yeah. You have two z squared minus 1. Did you factor that correctly? Yes. yes. Good. Now, does anything simplify it? No. The 5's? Sure. The 5's do. The z's? Yeah. Look at it. Now, what you have here, really, you could think of it like this if you wanted. You could think of it as 5 by by z to the third. 5z to the third times z. You could think of that. Isn't that 5z to the fourth? In that case, you go, oh, you know what? These are all gone. I have a z left. Or a different way you could think of it, fives are gone. All but one z is left. So what's going to be on the numerator of our fraction? Just a z. That's right. 2z squared minus 1. One last question. Do these z simplify? No. But they're right on top of each other. They always make it by. Can't do that. The minus 1. All right. We'll talk about one last thing right now. Uh, this will lead us into what we're going to do tomorrow. How much is that? Explain that. It is, it is, right? Why? Because when you do Addition, addition's called what when you do this? You could switch that, couldn't you? Because it doesn't make a difference, because it's addition. No problem. That equals one. Does the same thing happen with that? Yes. Because subtraction is not commutative. Subtraction says when I do this, the signs go with those values, so I would get negative x plus 5 over x minus 5. Now, that's, that's clearly not 1. That, that doesn't equal the same thing. But there's one thing we can do to simplify this. What we can do whenever you are off, notice how our, our variables and our numbers are exactly the same, but every sign is different. Do you guys see that? When that happens, what you can do, factor out a negative 1. Factor out negative 1. If we factor a negative 1, just like we factored a negative 1 from over here, all that's going to happen, look at, look at the board right now, some of you aren't looking. When you factor a negative 1, all that's going to happen is both signs change. Do you guys see that? So if we factor a negative 1 from here, let's factor negative 1, and what we're going to get is instead of negative x, we'll get x. Instead of plus 5, we'll get minus 5, all over x minus 5. Now, do you see that the x minus 5's are factors? Yeah. We can simplify that. And our answer, that's negative 1. So when our signs are different, but the values are the same, like, ask the value why speak on me. Like we have an x and an x and a 5 and a 5, but the signs are different in each case. Factor negative 1, and then you're going to see that. 
Um, here's the, the big kicker that we're going to use next time. Just write this last statement down. What we're going to try to do when we're factoring is make sure the term with the largest exponent is positive. Make sure the term with the largest exponent is positive. That's what I did here. Look, x was negative, so I factored a negative 1. If you make sure the term with the largest exponent is positive, your life becomes easier. You can factor things way easier. So what I want you to do is factor to make the, lar the term with the largest exponent positive. That'll help us out. That'll be on next time. Um, as far as your homework goes, you're not going to have any new homework. Yay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the assignment on the website. That way you have to go there to get it. So if you don't know where my website is, you got to go. Um, it's what I gave you the first day without the second S. It's this. Is it due Monday or is it due tomorrow? Okay, just so you know, everything is lowercase. I just can't write in lowercase. So, just everything is lowercase. It's sites.google.com. Backslash site, singular. Backslash Professor Leonard 570. Just like this. It's all one thing. You go to the top of your website browser, you plug that in, it will come up. Uh, go ahead and find that. The homework's not due tomorrow. It will be due on Monday because we're not done with the section, okay? I remember I told you at the beginning of class that I would give you the assignment before it's due if we didn't finish the section. So the assignment will be on there this afternoon if you want to get a head start, which I very much encourage you to do that. Go on the website and get it from there. All right, guys, have a great, great day. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. So. I did say to make the term with the largest exponent positive, and with that in mind, let's look at the next example. That's going to be this one. Now, here's what I mean by that. When we look at this problem, of course, the first thing that we do when we simplify, I gave you these steps last time, is you have to factor both the numerator and denominator because what you're going to be trying to do is simplify common factors, the things, the factors that are exactly the same. Now remember, it's not common terms, right? So we can't just arbitrarily cross out x squared and x squared. We can't do that. It's things that are multiplied together that are exactly the same on the numerator and denominator. And that means we have to factor first everything. So when we look at the bottom, we might be able to factor that one pretty easily with the diamond method. You guys see that already? Yeah. Is this going to have an extra step or not, do you think? No. No, no that's, it's going to be pretty easy. The top one, though, would you look at that and look how the term with the exponent there, the term with the x to the squared, that's negative or has a minus in front of it. What we want to do to make this easier on ourselves is factor out a greatest common factor from that, but also take the negative out. Make that positive. Because otherwise, it's going to look like you can't simplify some things that we're actually going to be able to simplify. Uh, I might show you that in just a second.